So, we are doing our first official giveaway on this channel. So you might want to stick around until the end of this video for that details. So, in this week's episode, we are going to build our first round epoxy coffee table. And I am going to take you on this journey and show you our step-by-step -step methods and techniques we took in achieving and manufacturing the perfect round epoxy coffee table. So starting this week's project off, I am going to start to cut my white melamine sheet down to its final size. Well, like I always say, don't cut your mold and don't build your table down to its final size. Always make sure to manufacture your table slightly bigger lengthwise and widthwise. So I agreed with my client that we are going to build this table in 1.2 meter radius. So I obviously made my mold 20 millimeters bigger. This is just going to make sure that you leave room for error if you're going to make a mistake somewhere down the line. And I do want to share with you guys, this is a new jig I bought from Festool. You clamp it to your router and then you clamp the jig to your Festool track. And then you have the perfect setup to cut a radius perfect, perfectly. And the specific wood we like using in building our molds is called white melamine. And the reason why we like using this wood is it's got a melamine sheet on the chipboard. This is just that when you're going to pour your epoxy, the epoxy is not going to penetrate into the wood. Like if you're going to use superwood MDF board, you have to apply tuck tape to your MDF superwood to make sure the epoxy is not going to penetrate into the wood so we just like using white melamine sheet and we are obviously going to apply wax in the steps to follow to make sure that your epoxy is not going to bond to your wood when I originally consulted with a client and they asked for a round coffee table I had a piece of slab in stock I had in mind for this project so we took it out of stock and we placed it over the mold and we shifted it around to get a good idea of how the end product is going to look. And I obviously didn't get a good feel for this project using this specific slab. So we had to move on to the next step and to go to plan B. So plan B, I had these cookies lying around in my shop and I really didn't know what I was going to do with it. It was odd. It was, it just didn't stick with any design. And this is when I thought to myself, let me just place the cookies on the white melamine sheet to see how the layout will look. And I shifted them around, turned them around, placed them in different positions until I got the perfect, perfect layout for this project. I consulted with my client and they were super, super happy with the design. And we had to go ahead to manufacture the perfect round epoxy coffee table. Moving to the next step in our project, and that is to cut our cookies in a radius. And as you can see, I'm just marking on the underside of my cookie where I need to cut with the bandsaw I haven't got. And the reason why we cut our cookies in a radius is to have your cookie sit perfectly in the mold when we're going to cast our epoxy. Luckily for us, our landlord had an ancient bandsaw all the way from Noah's Ark. This thing is super, super old. It's custom built and this video is shot in real time as you can see. And you can see this bandsaw is literally moving at less than one kilometer per hour. And it took us round about three hours to cut three cookies to have them fit perfectly on the inside of our mold. Just want to take this time quickly to thank each and everyone for supporting the channel this far. If you want to contribute to the channel and if you want to help us grow, 
make sure you like this video subscribe to our channel it honestly just helps us to produce future content thanks guys Moving to the next step in our project and that is placing our cookies on our melamine sheet. This is just to get the client excited, take some pictures, take some videos, do some Instagram reels, post some stuff on Facebook. This is honestly the first time that you can see the end result on your project. Next step in our project, I used some plexi plastic for the side panels on my mold. This is to make sure that when you're going to pour your epoxy, the epoxy is not going to leak out. And always make sure that the side panels you put up is slightly higher than the wooden slabs you're going to place inside. And you obviously have to make sure to apply some silicone on the inside of your mold. I'm not too sure what the Americans call it, like caulk or caulk or caulk or something. I'm not sure what you call it. In South Africa, we call it silicone. Next step in our project is to make sure to remove all the dust, the bark and softwood from our wood. This is to make sure that the epoxy is going to stick to your wood and not to any loose materials that's going to be in the way not to have a perfect bond between your wood and epoxy. Now there's a lot of tools you can use for this. We invested in this wire brush set. It's got small wire brushes, bigger wire brushes and it's got all the odd shapes and sizes to get into all the little pockets to make sure you remove all the dirt and particles you don't want on your wooden slab. Now just taking our mold to the inside of our shop because we've got a small dust free area and this is also critical when you're going to pour epoxy is to make sure there's no dust in the air. This is the product I mentioned previously. I'm not too sure if you get this product in your country but it's called Ram Wax. It's, it's a wax you apply on the inside of your mold. It's to make sure that your epoxy is not going to stick your mold and you have to make sure to apply this product on the complete surface on the side panels and into all the corners of your mold believe me we had it before where we missed some spots and it is not fun to remove the epoxy from the white melamine sheet so now we are placing our cookies to the inside of our mold and the tip I want to give you is when you're going to place your wooden slab into your mold, make sure to use an air hose and a clean cloth to wipe your wood off because I saw it before where people place their wooden slabs to the inside of the molds and they don't clean their woods thoroughly. And when you're going to pour the epoxy, you're going to see the dust particles and small little bark particles float in your epoxy and you're not going to be able to remove that once the epoxy is set. So, wood obviously floats when it gets in contact with any liquid. And the next step is to make sure to clamp your pieces of wood down 
and I recently invested in these pony clamps and I do have to say they are super super strong and they clamp our work pieces down very hard. Next step, I obviously calculated my epoxy off camera and the epoxy we are using is called Crystal 100. It is a deep casting epoxy, however we do not do deep casts because of, we've got our reasons and the re main reason is to reduce bubbles we picked up that when we do more layers um, we have less bubbles in our epoxy now just adding a few drops of black drop pigments and we start off with two drops and i'll show you the mistake i made now to follow and just making sure that you stir your resin and your hardener thoroughly and off camera we are using a wooden spoon to scrape the sides and the corners to make sure you have a perfect mixture of your resin and hardener this is the mistake i made i didn't check the epoxy before and the two drops i added wasn't enough as you can see i'm going to stop pouring now because you have to take a transparent cup add a little bit of epoxy in to make sure that the color you're going to pour is perfect now i didn't do that so off camera i did add an additional four drops and as you can see on the top of the screen the black color is much much darker and apologies in advance sometimes when we record the battery goes off on the camera and i missed most of my pouring shots on the epoxy but as you can see another tip i want to give you in when pouring epoxy find a small little ridge or wooden section on your epoxy to pour on this is going to reduce bubbles and don't throw your epoxy aggressively make sure you pour slowly and that's going to reduce less bubbles and as you can see i obviously did not seal my edges now there's a big boxing match in the epoxy world since epoxy table started is to seal your edges or not and this is also something i want to share with you at the end of this video we've got a epoxy online masterclass that we are selling i don't want to go into too much detail now but we basically go into full details on why we don't seal our edges why we sealed it before and why we're doing it the way we're doing it now next step is to remove the plexi plastic side panels and as you can see it removes quite easily and as you can see i obviously missed a few spots of applying the wax to the side panels and i struggled a bit to remove the perspex but this didn't worry me too much because i know once we're going to place our coffee table on our cmc machine we will be able to remove this easily luckily for me i did apply enough wax on our melamine sheet and as you can see the mold is removing super easily from our epoxy table so heading down to our local cnc supplier my good friend dorium uh, he's got a very big cnc machine and we basically do this step on all our projects and as you can see the top of our wood is obviously not leveled and we basically pour to the maximum depth to where the lowest point of the wood is 
and then we place our project on a CNC machine. This is to make sure that you have a flat, flat, flat surface between your epoxy and your wooden section. And the uh, advice and tip I want to give you is when you're going to place any project on a CNC machine is to make sure that your router bit is moving at a very high speed, but the head of the router needs to move slowly if it makes any sense at all. Obviously repeating this step both sides of our table, it's super critical to give the client exactly what they're paying for. So after getting the center of our coffee table, we're using a flush trim bit at a very low speed to cut a perfect, perfect circle. A more perfect round coffee table than this you will never find. Most probably one day when the channel has more than a million subscribers, we will most probably invest in our own CNC machine. So make sure you subscribe so we can get our CNC machine. So taking the table back to our shop and the next step to follow is to close all the small little cracks and holes. So for this specific project, these cookies was extremely, extremely dry. And just cleaning all the small little pockets, cracks and holes with my AOs, that's to make sure that when I'm going to apply epoxy to fill all the cracks and holes that there's no dust particles inside the cracks and holes I want to fill. So normally how we previously do it is we've got a quick set epoxy called crystal. You'll see the steps to follow. But for this project, for some reason, we had so, so many cracks and holes we had to fill. And I ended up just mixing a small batch of epoxy to close all the cracks and holes on our project. And the reason why we don't close only the cracks and holes is once you're going to close only the crack the overflowing epoxy on that crack is going to leave a stain and as you can see i'm just applying epoxy randomly all over where the bigger cracks and holes are that's just to make sure that i give the epoxy enough time to go into the holes and cracks so the way we previously done it way back at the beginning is we will only close the cracks and holes and like i mentioned just now is when you're going to sand your project down the overflowing epoxy on that crack is going to leave a stain it basically means that the overflowing epoxy is penetrating into the wood and as you can see in this step that i'm doing now is i'm basically coating my complete surface with a thin layer of epoxy. I'm basically staining my complete surface of my table. This is to make sure that the epoxy is penetrating into the wood and that I'm not going to have any stains when I'm going to start sanding my table.
So, off camera, I did sand it that layer of epoxy down with my Festool Rotex machine and a 80 grit sandpaper. Then I'm going to move to my Festool ETS-5 finishing sander and I'm going to start sanding my table down with 120 grit sandpaper. And the tip I want to give you is, I don't know, for some reason, when we're placing a new sandpaper pad on our machine, we like sanding the epoxy section first and then we're moving to the wood section of our table. Don't ask me why we do this, we just like doing it. There's no really any reason for that, we just like doing it. So the previous step we done was covering our complete surface with epoxy. But you will see, when you come back the next day, some of those cracks and holes you filled with epoxy was full. And when you come back the next day, you will see that the cracks will still have small little areas you need to fill with epoxy. This is absolutely normal. And the product we are using here is called Crystal UV. When it comes in contact with sunlight or any UV light, it basically takes like 30 seconds to dry. And this is one of the best products I ever came across. When you're filling your cracks and holes, the epoxy has no time to penetrate into the wood. This meaning that there won't be any stain on your wood. Now I'm just doing the final inspections and just filling the last little cracks and holes on my project to make sure you give the client what they're paying for. And yes, one of the most received questions we get on the channel is, do we repeat the same process both sides of our table? And yes, the answer is absolutely yes. Moving to the next step in our project, and that's by taking the edge off our table. Literally, taking the edge off and giving our edge of our table a small 45 degree chamfer. That's just to give our table a smooth, smooth look. And this is our go-to on basically all our tables, and the clients absolutely love it. And also just want to mention that this little palm router from Festool is the newest addition to our tool collection. It's an absolute must for any shop. We previously used the OA 1400, which is nothing wrong with it. But what we found with the OA 1400 is it is a quite big machine to router your edges. Sometimes when you get to the corner of a table, you will see that the machine will tilt slightly because of its weight. That's why we invested in a little palm router from Festool absolute beast and it's so mobile it's so light and it's so quick to route to the edges on any table obviously just signing all the pieces that goes out of our shop and that's just to give it our custom brass craft house logo to sign this beast of a table now next step this is not a polishing stage. We only sanded this project down to 400 grit. Then I'm taking out my Festool polish machine with a sponge under. That's just to remove any marks or dust for the oiling steps to follow. So for this project, we are going to use Odis oil. This is lately our go-to oil on all our epoxy projects. Don't ask me why. Well, Ask me why. <laughs> this gives us the perfect finish for our epoxy projects. Basically can sand our projects down to whatever grit our heart desires. And like I mentioned, for this project, we sand it down all the way to 400 grit. 
and we're using a very old orbital sander and the reason why we do this is the vibration of the machine basically massages the oil into the wood and we will typically start with a first coat of Odis oil super duper now the super duper range is a more liquid type of oil now we believe this first coat penetrates into the wood and then we will wait about one hour we will wipe it off we will wait 24 hours we will come back the next day and then we will apply the original Odis oil on our project now for the giveaway for this week's project we are going to give away one of our online epoxy masterclasses now you will see at the end of this video we will have a small preview of what we have to offer and to be able to win this masterclass you have to like this video you have to subscribe to the channel and you have to comment down below that you have done so good luck to everyone we will most probably do the draw next week and if you want to find out who won down in the description of this video you will find the details to our social media pages that's where we will announce the winner of this masterclass now the masterclass costs 90 dollars and there will obviously only be one winner of this masterclass now each week we are releasing a new video and there will each week be a new winner to this masterclass thanks guys enjoy the final product and remember to check out the last part of this video where we're going to do a small preview of this masterclass thanks guys enjoy the video and i'll see you next week with another super cool project cheers Welcome to this online epoxy masterclass. Moisture content. You heat right into the core of wood species to remove the bark with an aggressive steel wire brush. Table design. Slab preparation. Building process. Epoxy mold. Release agent wax. Calculate epoxy. Seven. Eight. so we got 16 points mixing epoxy color consistency whether to seal your life edges or not pouring epoxy sanding between layers sanding grooves inside your epoxy dealing with bubbles maximum depth curing time removing the table from your mold a local CNC supplier. Start sanding. Cutting your table to size and edge. Filling the cracks and holes. Smoky finish. High gloss see through finish. Wood surface finishing. Tabletop supports. To drill into our wooden section. Our online epoxy masterclass is finally here. It's four hours of masterclass where I'm going into detail on how we build all our epoxy tables. Where I'm going to teach you from start to finish how to build an epoxy table successfully. I'm going to show you all our methods and techniques we take in our everyday business building epoxy tables successfully. Down in the description of this video, you're going to find the details on how to purchase this masterclass. You don't want to miss this one.